you're in the city of Medina and the year is 11 after Hijra and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he has just passed away and the event of Saqifa has just occurred. Now the Shia of Imam Ali alayhi salam, they're being forced to give bay'ah to this new ruler. And I want to know, what would you do in that situation? For example, would you consider doing taqiyya and give bay'ah, but help the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam in secret? Or would you even consider speaking out risking your life, risking the lives of your family, your friends, what would you do? I think in such a situation I would speak out because it's not so, it's not so easy to keep it quiet and to do like taqiyya in my, in my opinion. I believe that speaking out would be the only thing that I can possibly do for them. So I would try to keep a slight of low profile, but be as loud as I can possibly be to help the Ahl Bayt and to be beside them. When I think of how lonely the Ahl Al Bayt must have felt in those days when nearly everyone deserted them, I can't imagine it. Now I want you to picture that you are standing outside the house of Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam. This of course is such a blessed house, a place where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would go every day and he would greet his daughter with such love, with such love. He would greet his grandchildren, Al Hassan Wal Hussein, with such warmth. I want you to imagine now that you are seeing the enemy troops come towards the house and you hear the threat is made, but Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam, she refuses their entry. And now you see them push the door and you hear the cries of Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam. And you see them set fire to the house and break in an entry. How would you feel seeing such a thing like that? And how do you think you would react? It won't be easy. Seeing the person that you love and a role model someone that you look up to being pushed in such a way. I mean, seeing your mother being hurt or she might cut her finger or something and it's so big for you. And then this is, this is someone higher than your mother. This is the Fatima to Zahra, the lady of the universe. To see her in such a way, wouldn't, I, I would probably break down crying. I would run. I'd rush to the door, maybe push them away, go and try to aid her. I wouldn't be able to stand there quiet because it's just not something easy to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. This religion of Islam, you know, you often hear the phrase Islam is a religion of peace, when in reality, it's fairer to say that Islam is a religion of justice. That when we see someone, when their rights have been taken away from them, we do not stay silent, we speak out, we act to help them, or even try to help them. I want you to imagine now that the attack is over and you walk inside the house of Lady Fatima alayhi salam and you see her lying on the ground and she's in so much pain and her children are there too Al Hassan Wal Hussein Zainab and Kulfum young children so traumatised by what they've seen they're crying they're trying to get their mother to get up how do you think you would 
comfort them? How do you think you would help to make the situation a little bit easier? I don't believe that anything I can possibly do will make the situation any better because, like I said before, it's not something easy and there's, there's not much I can do. I'd probably be in so much, like, I'd be so upset myself that I wouldn't be able to comfort anybody else. And what, what am I going to do, like, amongst Imam al Hassan and Hussein? I'm nothing compared to them. How am I going to be able to go and comfort them? There's, there's, no, there's no way I can think I can comfort them. Because I'm no one compared to them. These individuals, they had the greatest of Iman and Taqwa. They were the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to see how emotional and upset they got at these situations. It reminds us that even the best among us can feel sadness and weakness and upset at these awful calamities. Finally, sister, I want you to now imagine that again you are in Medina, but this time you are with Imam Mehdi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his reappearance. I want you to imagine that you are walking beside him through the city and he's taking you somewhere and you turn to him and say, Yabna Rasulullah. Where are you taking me? And he says to you, I'm taking you to my grandmother, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, to that grave, that place where every lover of Zahra wishes to know where that grave is, so we can stand next to it, to smell that scent, to be close to her, I want you to imagine that you are standing in front of that grave now and if you could say anything to her, what would you say? I don't, I don't know. I think that I'd start off speechless and then slowly start to ask her if the things, the services that I'm offering to the Ahl Bayt, if they are accepted, if they are something that she likes, I would ask her if the name that I take on, like my name Fatima, I took it from her, if she's proud of it, and if I'm making her proud with my actions and with the name that I'm carrying, What a blessing that you have been given that name. Yes, a very big blessing. Mm -hmm. And I hope sincerely and pray that Our Lady is happy with you, that she is pleased with you. And I know that she is guiding you and praying for you every day of your life. For that is the love that she has for her Shia, for her lovers. I thank you so much, sister, for coming on here and being with me for Imagine today. And I, and I hope, inshallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep us all firm and steadfast on the path of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as -salam. And I hope, above all, that he hastens the reappearance of our master, Sahib al-Zaman so he may fill this world with goodness and justice and that we can strive to help him even in the smallest and maybe insignificant of ways. <laughs> الا خداي خ
خدا کند که بیای خدا کند تو نور غیر نواییم خدا کند که بیای خدا کند